Well, we'll start the interview now. Okay. So uh, I don't think everybody here—I don't think everybody here knows you uh, yet, but they will after this interview. They'll know you a little bit better. Uh, we're going to show a video, and uh, just a two-minute video that Ryan, your your grandson, made, and then we'll get on with it. Okay. Okay. So for those of you that don't know how, um, I'm going to play you a quick video. It's two minutes. Um, it was cut down from a 10-minute documentary that Ryan, uh, his grandson, made about two years ago. Yeah. And um, this is a version that Microsoft picked up on and cut down to, to a two-minute spot. And you'll see why Microsoft likes this in a moment. My name is Harold J. Lesko. And in two weeks, I will be 97. People now generally call me Grandpa. Grandpa is what they call a lettering man, uh, which means he was a typographer. So he would spend his days hand drawing different letter forms and creating these elaborate typefaces. We got Grandpa a computer 15 years ago. and. I knew I had to show it in Microsoft Paint. I don't think anybody had any idea how important this thing would be to him. When I lost my eyesight, I thought my, that my painting days were over. The computer has made it possible for me to continue to paint. This was one of my first drawings on the, on the computer. The, nice part is you can blow it up in these sections and that's the way I do things. I got a lot of patience. That's what you really need anyway. So. Nobody ever sees what I really do. I would like to know that they, they really get some enjoyment out of it because that's the object of painting, you know. I never really referred to me as an artist because that's up to other people to decide whether you're an artist or not. I never thought I'd be here at 96, but I still enjoy painting, and the computer is a marvelous instrument. Grandpa, make a wish. Now I can do whatever I want. So, uh, 96, that was a while back. Yes. That was a, a while ago. Yeah. Um, watching this video and seeing your work, I've, uh -huh. I've looked at a lot of your paintings and, uh, and work online now, and the one thing that stands out for me is how positive and joyful your images are. We talked a little bit about this over lunch. Um, and we, we talked about how artists, there's some art that's very negative and very cynical, and your work is very, very happy. It yeah. feels happy, and, and I want to know why. Well, I start out with the idea when I start a painting that I want to do something that's pleasant to see and to look at and to, and to feel, really. Uh, that's my aim in doing whatever I'm doing, and I do it to the best of my ability. And if I don't like it, the thing that's nice about my computer is in just a few minutes I can erase it, right. and I can start all over right. and refresh it and, and do the things that I think were bothering me. and. I can correct it very easily. I can't do that with paint. <laughs> so did you used to paint by hand? Did you paint with... Uh, uh, paint with, with do acrylics? I paint with uh, you, you, acrylics? Right. I might make a sketch. I might make a sketch. Uh, uh, but I like to do the sketch on the computer because I can do it in about two, three minutes sometimes. Just get an idea for something. And so that I don't forget it, 
to do to do it uh, because other things will crop in on it, you know, and so forth. So I, I, I lose some things that way. So I try to jot it down to refresh my memory. Right. Yeah, and uh, I think the computer does that beautifully for me. And how long have you been working on MS Paint and doing this pixel painting? How, uh, the pixel painting I uh, had, uh, uh, when I was 85 years old, I got the uh, computer as a gift. Couldn't even turn it on. <laughs> and uh, my little, my grandchildren, this is one of them, they're this big going through school and they're learning to use the computer and they turn around and teach grandpa. Right. I get the clues from them as to what to do and so forth. And this man right here helped me a great deal with the uh, art programs because he's he's an artist himself and he's interested in what I'm doing and so forth. So let's get into that. When you so Ryan is a is a designer artist. Yes. And uh, you started out in as a lettering man, they say. So can you, can you uh, in, a, in a graphic art studio, they have an, uh, uh, an artist uh, studio in the engraving house. And they work for the glass companies in Cleveland, or yeah, uh, in Toledo, I'm sorry. And uh, uh, they did ashtrays, glass ashtrays. Everybody smoked in those Absolutely. days. Absolutely. And they'd have ashtrays, every hotel, every table you looked at had an ashtray. And Libby Glass made transparent ones with a base about four and a half inches. And on that they would rubber stamp the advertising of the hotel and what they right. offered and so forth. Yeah. And I was the guy that had to, to design whatever they had into a circle so it would work on that rubber stamp. That was my first art job. Wow. And you didn't use a computer for that? Hmm? No computer for that? No, that's way, that's back in the, uh, well, we're talking uh, 30, 1931, 32. So you had to have a very steady hand. You had to be uh, real attention to detail. If you're, you're hand lettering, the, the fonts. That you had to do. Uh, I did not do it in a free manner like a lot of people are beautiful at handwriting, thick and thins and things. That's not the type I do. I, I do the study uh, feathering type of cleanliness all the way around. Even use white paint to clean up any small errors and so forth. So there's there's a font. Is what? is it true that there's a font called Lasco, Lasco script? There is a uh, there is a script. The American Greeting owns it. American Greetings. That's the first script that they put on uh, the typesetters uh, that, that uh, would would handle uh, that. So. Do you make a lot of uh, money off of the royalties of that script? Off of what? Off of the, the, the font? Do you make any money off of that? Not anymore. No. I, I get a, a retirement check from them, but it isn't much. <laughs> but, not, uh, a, not a lot of, there, there's never no, been a lot when, of money. When you go there, what you do for them is theirs. There's, there's no doubt about that. Wow. So, how did your grandson talk you into this whole mess here? Um, get it doing the uh, documentary and making you internet famous. How did how did he? Well, talk he you didn't into have to do much selling. <laughs> 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 All he did was open his mouth, and yeah. <laughs> I dove. <laughs> Uh, I think I think that's fantastic that uh, there there's a lot of attention attention around um, creating 
someone, someone such as yourself creating artwork, and one of the thoughts or, or questions that I have is, does it, does it bother you at all when they put 98-year-old or legally blind in front of your, like we've done today, to, um, to help to promote you, or do you, do you prefer to just see yourself as, I'm an artist, I'm Hal Lasko, the artist? Well, you're, you're talking a little bit about two things. I've always wanted to be recognized as an artist. Excellent. That has never changed. <laughs> and uh, to be recognized, to be 98 years old, is a tremendous honor for me. And that's hard to, uh, for me to um, even imagine that this could happen to me. But it's happened, so... And I love it. Excellent. I love it. <laughs> so when you, uh, you were telling me that, that you have no trouble waking up in the morning, you, you, you love wake, getting up early and jumping right into your work. So right. tell us, tell, what's a typical day like for, for you? Well, um, some days I go to bed. I go to bed generally around 9 o'clock and I'll watch the news and, and things like that or... Uh, the sports that are on and things like that. But a lot of times there isn't much interesting and I fall asleep. <laughs> and I get in eight hours and I wake up and it's five o'clock in the morning. And I've had a dream about painting something or correcting something and I jump on my computer and think I'll try it and it surprises me how many times it works out, you know, that <laughs> I've solved the problem that was bothering me the day before. So you, you get inspired by the dreams that you've had sometimes? Or are you trying to capture sort of a, something that's inside the dream space? Because I, I feel like a lot of your paintings feel slightly surreal, you know, that there's it, it feels like a, like a fantasy, uh, and the environment is is very fantastical. Right. And vivid, right. My main object is to uh, not paint realistically. I, I don't want, I, I want it to be in somewhat the abstract area, even a basis for something that is pictorial. I, I still like to have the, the basis feeling like it's abstract <coughs> some degrees for some reason it's it's it, that's what makes it how last go with you that that it feels that right. to me see. so when you're when you're thinking about it and then you have to translate that into or when you're you imagine an image and you have to put it on to the computer uh -huh. how do you do that when you're legally blind you know you you're you're suffering from wet macular degeneration, which is essentially um, where you can't, you can't really see what's directly in front of you, correct? It's hard. The, the center of the eye is, right. a, is, a, is, is affected. But so how do, you, how do you translate that onto something that you can't fully see? Well, I have a great deal of help. I have a magnifier that was given to me by uh, the uh, uh, Society for the Blind, uh, the, the vet, uh, the vet administration. I'm sorry, gave me that. Right. But the the uh, blind administration has helped me with a lot of equipment to see, and it, it's a matter of magnifying that makes the difference as to whether I can see it or not. So, how does that change the way you approach a painting? If you can't, if you have to zoom in so much to do one pixel at a time, how does that affect how you approach doing the art? Well, it, uh, I do one pixel at a time, but I can do it. It has an airbrush. Right. I can blow the airbrush, and it covers several pixels <laughs> with color. Right. And I can repeat that, or uh, I can keep working back and forth 
with the airbrush, put color from one side, put color from the other, save the two so that they stay together on the computer and form the color in between. So you're playing, you're sort of, you're, you, you have an image and then you're, you're kind of playing around a little bit with your motion and uh, That's and right. I'm back. really painting with the airbrush a lot of times. Nice. I'm blending and so forth, and it's a, it's a lot like painting, really. Yeah. It's just a matter of doing it with a different instrument. And I'm not interested in changing uh, any programs or anything. I, this just works fine for the way I want right. my pure things yeah. to do. So. What? What kind of what kind of art inspires you? What what who are your favorite artists or works of art? I'm very fortunate in that I can appreciate all kinds of art. Uh, the first art that really appealed to me, believe it or not, was Ed Hopper's Sunday Morning. Okay, that's is it, that a, I'm not familiar with that. Is it an editorial? Aren't you? Well, he also did the. Uh, 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 he did some of the, uh, some barns, he did uh, uh, early stuff that I like to paint. Uh, uh, the land, landscape or, uh, or buildings and landscape right. style? And then I like, when, when of course the Impressionist uh, got recognized as being fine art, that was the thing that turned me on, to tell you the truth. Because now I felt I, I, could, uh, I could do something that w might be of interest. So the Impressionists are the ones that do the little dots? I, I just try to paint an impression of things that I see. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't want to paint them realistically, like a camera. And that seemed to be the classical way of art up until the Impressionists. Now this is the way I came into viewing it, so that doesn't mean this is the way it really was. It's the way I happened to get it. So, were there a lot of artists in your family? Are you? Are you? There are or? artists in my family, but uh, I'm the only one that does the paintings. Right. Yeah, I had a brother that uh, was head of the industrial design sec section and. In Toledo, uh, 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 one of the battery companies there, and they, they did work for the automobile companies. And uh, he was responsible for designing the dashboard so that they could do the electrical work, things like that. It, uh, it was Autolite, I think was the name. Uh, do you, uh, so you, your, your computer isn't online? Right? You, you're not connected to the internet? Is that correct? I didn't follow. You're, you're not connected to the internet? Your computer... No, so, I'm not. I'm not at all. So are, uh, you, are, you, are you aware of how much... Uh, you, I mean, you must be getting fan mail. You must be getting... I mean, the people love your, your stuff. How do you find out about all the people that are looking at your work? Does your does Ryan tell you about that or? Oh uh, uh, well, uh, uh, when it first happened, uh, you know, there was a rush of uh, sales, and also a rush of comments about me. Right. And you have to have thick skin to read this. Wow. Because <laughs> you get every you get the truth. Yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> And everything that's in between. And then I find out that some of it is because they're representing uh, programs that are done by other companies. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they're taking a swing at me because <laughs> I didn't leave my program. <laughs> yeah, there's a And they have every right to do that. On, on the internet, we call those haters. We call them haters. <laughs> you call them what? We call them haters. <laughs> the people that are, uh, or, well, or, or trolls. I'll tell you what, I gave up three years of my life, so we all have the privilege 
of doing what they're doing. So yeah. I don't yeah. want to call yeah. it off. <laughs> I want everybody to use their opinions and speak them up and, and talk about them and yeah, find uh, out what's best. <laughs> so you like putting your stuff out there. Hmm. You like putting your stuff out there for everybody to see. I enjoy it a great deal. I, That's great. Yeah, I think it's marvelous. So do you do you use your computer for any other? I don't want to get you in trouble, but do you use I, your computer for any other ap applications? Or I don't. I don't use it for anything else. That's great. It's my it's my hobby, and it's it's my total reason for wanting to do things to, today. So, and when you're traveling, like like today, did you bring a computer? Uh, I mean, you can't work on your art. How does that? How does that make you? No, feel? it's, it's got to be set up so that I can use my magnifier, which is what I read the newspaper by. I read that every morning. Did you miss it today? N not painting. I miss it today. Yeah. What are you working on? What are you working on right now? You mean at the house? Yeah, at the house. Well, I, I'm trying to do uh, color shapes. I'm trying to do like the new moves. I'm breaking them down and I'm putting them in the basic colors, uh, the shapes. And I'm, I make, I'm putting the shapes on the square the way I feel they should be, you know. Nice. It still will be the number, but it will be my number. It will be... See, it sounds like you're deconstructing uh, typography in a way. I'm reconstructing the... I'm going to go to the alphabet, too. <laughs> I've got some letters already done. Excellent. I, I like the ampersand and things like that. Uh, they can get pretty tricky and... <laughs> <laughs> for anybody, I'd say. It's hard for me to draw I would say that, that would be difficult to yeah. draw for anybody, yes. wouldn't you? Yes. On the yeah. computer. Absolutely. I'm trying to take something that looks difficult and do it on the computer show that I can use that program and do it. And I proved it to myself, so. So everyone, everyone wants to know if you're getting really, really rich off of this, uh, <laughs> this whole enterprise. I don't really have my family. I've got a, my family's all involved with, we have a company. Excellent. And you can retire soon. Here's a guy can tell you whether we're rich or not. <laughs> <laughs> I think nobody tells me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, <sighs> what I'd love to do. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I, I think that uh, in selling prints, I think uh, uh, you can be very fortunate and accumulate money, but I, that's not my aim in life. You won't believe this, but... I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. <laughs> Ryan told me what you used to make when you were first starting out. Yeah. 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 So money was never... The reason why I was doing it, to tell you the truth, I still want to do it because I just want to make it look like hell Esco did it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my aim when I paint. So, I would love to open the floor for some questions. Are you are you up for that? To see what other people have to. We'll we'll, we'll keep the haters. The press. I don't think any of them came, but we'll we'll ask some questions. Okay. All right in the front. I, I'll repeat. I'll repeat it. If you could ask God one question, what would that question be? So the question was, if you could ask God one question, what ask would that question? Ask God. Be? Yeah. <laughs> one question. <Yep. laughs> I can't figure out why he picked me for this wonderful job. <laughs> <laughs> when I find out, I'll let you know. Okay. okay. 
You'll have to get connected to the internet for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there a, yeah, right, right over here. Uh, the best advice just about life that you could give to someone who might come and consult some advice? Sure. Um, what is the best advice that you could give someone in their 20s? In their 20s? I think that's what you said. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I really think that, that you should do what you feel you do the best. Uh, as far as the job goes. But I know that our economy sets it up so that you got to take the job that pays the most money and all that sort of thing. So that's a hard thing for people to do, to do, to find something that they really like to do and earn a good living too. That's the difficult part with even being an artist, to tell you the truth. I, I was torn between commercial art and fine art all my life, so I know the feeling. Uh, fine art is hard to earn a living. Even the better painters uh, were having problems. They have to go off to in, in the summertime, and, and uh, they refresh, uh, they have incomes as teachers and things like that. And they go off in the, in the summertime during their vacation to do the paintings and things like that. So they, they don't have it easier, and they're the better painters, I'd say, in the States, you know. I think, uh, I think a lot of people in this room feel that, that struggle between commerce and, and what they love. Uh, you know, making, making a living versus wanting to just create art. Create art, yeah. Well, it, it would be one. See, I'm in a I'm in a very fortunate position. I don't have to, when I wake up in the morning, all I have to worry about is whether I can get a painting going on the computer. <laughs> That's my worry. <laughs> now it used to be I had to furnish the breakfast for the family, all the food. <laughs> right. I had to go out and earn the money first for all that stuff. Now I don't have to do that. That's wonderful. You, you it's... and I have uh, wonderful caretakers. Uh, my son's uh, mother and father, uh, my son and daughter-in-law, they take care of me. I just, just great. So I have so you're, nothing you're, to worry you're about. You're freed up. You're freed up. Hmm? You're freed up to do. Uh, to do I'm. Work. I'm as. If if I fail in any way, it's my fault, nobody else. <laughs> we'll ask a, another question. Huh? Any other questions? Back, or in the middle. What is your greatest source of inspiration? So what is your greatest source of inspiration? What inspires you the most? Well... Of course, there's, there's many things that make me want to paint, you know. Uh, I, I go through, I've gone through periods of time where I wanted to do, way back, I'm talking now, the Red Barn. The Red Barn was the principal subject that I wanted to paint. And one of the reasons was the colors and and so forth that it offered, and the various things on the farms and that were of interest, uh, shape-wise and so forth. And then I also got interested in painting trees because of the seasons, the way they changed. I caddied very young, and I watched the woods uh, change all the colors through the year as they start out with flowering trees turning into green trees in, into uh, orange and then the, the deep reds and, and so forth uh, all through the year. And I, I was just going to say your tree paintings are my personal favorites. The ones with the, the one looking up 
Yes. I, that, that, that one's my my favorite work that you that you've done. But I, the the inspiration from huh. nature is and the change in the seasons is is evident. It's a combination of. I try to set up what I call a graphic uh, dictionary type of thing. Like, instead of words, I'm doing it with visual things. And it's, it's uh, I, like a, a tree, if I come up with it a certain way and I like it, that goes into my vocabulary, in my so-called, and I... Uh, I remember that, and I'll use that on other paintings when I need it. Right. And if you do this for long enough time, you can get up, uh, you can have a great number of things where you can sit down, go through a whole painting, and never have to look at the objects. <laughs> you know, you already have them in your uh, in your work and so forth. So. Um, Paul Klee is a wonderful example of those things. I, I think uh, when he came along to me, when it, when he became prominent, uh, he also encouraged me to do the direction that I was going, trying to make the thing mine, rather than following somebody else and so forth. So. I have no formal art training, none. In high school, I went to two art classes and learned the color wheel, and that's about, and the basics, the very basic things about art. That's my legal training. <laughs> In the hat? Um, the the question was, what kind of music do you enjoy listening to? What's your, what's some of your favorite kinds of music? <laughs> well, I like semi classical a lot. Um, the main, uh, I like the bolero for one. I like that rhythm, the, the starting out and the and the build up and the I, I think in painting you can do similar things to you know you can use music to to help you figure out uh, uh, colors and things like this in a rhythmical way you know it helps I I'm not a musician or uh, I don't have the appreciation of music like a lot of people do. Even the members of my family uh, had much more of a, uh, respect for the music than I did. So I was always interested in the graphics. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't. I guess I just didn't have room for everything. You know. <laughs> In the back in the glasses. Yeah. How do you decide which work you That's a great, great question. Um, how do you decide when you're finished? When a, when your work is done? When a piece is finished? Well, for a long time, that was a difficult thing to do. But uh, I, after a while, I figured out that I'm spoiling a lot of things through overworking. Right. So then I started to go the other way, and I found out that being simple is much more fun when you make it work. When it works right, it's about the most beautiful thing you can do, you know, when it's done simply. I think, and then men like Mon Vien came along and did the straight lines and the three basic colors and put them together in in what they call fine art. And when that happened, it lit up a lot of light bulbs in me because 
I could do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there is a question in the front. So the, the question was, your grandchildren got you the computer, mm -hmm. but before the computer, what was your creative outlet? Uh, you mean uh, what I used for paint? Or? Yeah, or what did you do to create before you got the oh, computer? Oh, I strictly used the uh, uh, poster, uh, the uh, acrylics, or uh, watercolor. Uh, you know uh, the, the heavy stuff, and I could make uh, I could use it like it look like an oil, you know. And I have I have quite a few things painted even now. I still have them. Usually, uh, when I do something, somebody would grab it in the family, and first thing you know, I'd see it framed up in their house. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, and I, I wasn't able to paint that much either. I, I had a lot of work to do over time and, and trying to keep the, uh, the family going as much as I could. When did the, when did the eyesight, um, the The, the eyesight came later in life. That it was after I retired, in fact. But uh, I was told that I had the tendency uh, quite a long time before anything ever happened, really. Any other questions in the front? Okay, this is a big question. <laughs> <laughs> so you've, you've lived almost 100 years. It's a big question for yeah. a little guy. <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost 100 years you've lived, um, and you mentioned that you were in the service for a few of those years. Three. Three of those years. Just one month shy of three years. And the question was, are we... Are we honoring that enough in, in our society in, in terms of, I don't, I don't know if I'm asking the question perfectly right, but yeah, you're doing it. Are, are, we, are we honoring that service enough in, in this country, in, in the United States? Well, to tell you the truth, my feelings about a guy in the service, I think he deserves all the respect that we can give him. It's not easy for, to put on a uniform. The minute you do, you become an object of anything can happen. <laughs> it's a totally different life. And you've got to adjust mentally and everything else to that living. And men that are doing that uh, deserve all the thanks that we can give them and all the appreciation. They, and they've actually earned it, too. Now that's my feeling about the service. I was in a fighter group, and I watched young guys on a daily basis get in the airplanes and fly protective cover over the bombers in Europe. And some of them would get shot down almost on a daily basis. We'd lose somebody. And here's the, and these guys are all young. They're 22. I never heard one of them ever in any way say or think that he wanted, did not want to do what he was doing. They were, they were all willing to sacrifice themselves for. It. And I think we should appreciate that fact that when when they put that uniform on, that's really what they're doing. Thank you. 
Mac. Okay, the question is, he's saying you're very, very coherent. Um, does the art, uh, he said he's, he's met 40 year olds that don't speak as well as you, um, myself perhaps included. <laughs> um, it, it, does the art play a role in keeping you mentally sharp? Does your art play a role in? What, what is your question? Does, <laughs> does your, <laughs> you lost me somewhere on that. <laughs> Does your art play a role in keeping you mentally sharp? Uh, you know I can't catch all the words. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we'll move on. Um, no, the question was... Uh, when when you do your art, yeah. does it does it help keep you mentally sharp, like focused, uh, coherent, be able to remember things better, or does it play a role in in keeping your brain young? You know, I think it's better if you're not too sharp. <laughs> 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 and I'll tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> when I when I wake up in the morning, I'm half awake. And I'll tell you something, I've done my best work being half awake. I I'm not awake enough to know that I shouldn't be doing this, I should do it this way. <laughs> yeah, I don't make any changes or any I just go right ahead and do what I'm and it seems to me like I get more done, <laughs> and I'm more happy with what I've done. Do you drink coffee? Do hmm? you drink coffee? Yes, but not a, I, I gave that up in later years. Uh, caffeine became a, a criminal, uh, you know. Yeah. I don't know what exactly it caused, but they came up with some reason why you shouldn't have it. <laughs> Along with nicotine and a few others, and I got rid of that too. I I smoked a lot when I was younger. So did I. I've been most fortunate because I've had, I've I've lived through a lot of things that uh, took my friends from me. You know, very early in life. All the, all the diseases that, they, they, you know, polio, I can think of consumption, tuberculosis. Uh, 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 they used to take young people. Mm -hmm. I'd have a friend and all of a sudden he's, he's gone. Or she's gone, you know. And they, they died of something. Even things like measles. And, and that would take some... You know, so. Yeah, we forget that uh, technology is not just with computers, but with medicine and, and a, a lot of other things. I think we're doing wonderfully well. Well, um, we're all really glad that you're here, that you came. Um, well, I, I, mean, I want to thank everybody for being interested in what I've done. And I, I appreciate every minute that I'm here. Thank you.